Hi. Okay, good. So it's been a while since I did a research vlog for my current self in this current timeline. And uh, a lot has happened. <laughs> for one thing, my hair won't shut up. I met a malignant chronomantic anomaly that disintegrated my lab, and so Robin came to get me, and now I'm staying with my cousin Ash. So that's happened. Uh, Project Jonathan has expanded, and uh, so has my family, apparently. I'm a lot less of a friendless orphan than we thought. That's an interesting feeling. <laughs> I did teach at Choha College of Witchcraft and Wizardry very briefly. It provided me with a very advantageous position in which to do my own research, so it was hard to say no. I made some very interesting breakthroughs in interdimensional travel. Those breakthroughs did cause me some issues, like being trapped in a hell dimension for a couple weeks and getting arrested and fired, but it's fine. It's fine. It taught me what I needed to know, and with decent reliability, I can travel universes now. I can actually look for what I need now. And at around the same time, my new friend Fletch, who was a former student, has made a very interesting discovery. Wonderful, some sort of technomantic device, yes? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a camera. They're absolutely fantastic, aren't they? So, yes, uh, yes. First things first, yeah. My name is Dr. Emmanuel Fletcher. Very pleased to meet you all. I'm going to be talking about some rather fascinating examples magical creature these wonderful chrysalids here that you see these are the chrysalids of something called the interdimensional butterfly or lepidopteri omnifarius now to call it a butterfly is actually something of a misnomer as we have bugger all idea what these things look like in real life we call them butterflies due to this chrysalid state they seem to need a stable dimension in order to uh, pupate that's where we find these chrysalids upon hatching, they will once again enter the space between spaces, you know, the, the non-space space thing. That can sometimes be a problem because it can weaken areas where they've been uh, pupating, where they've been laid, and this can sometimes lead to incursions by less friendly denizens of the other spaces. They're still being studied quite extensively. I believe the Joneses have a particular interest in them. Now, these, these chrysalids can be used to help with interdimensional travel, uh, primarily through their means as a locator of paths of weak spaces. Uh, through them, you can actually track the progress of the adult butterfly, and that will allow you to find new worlds as you find the other places where they have breached. Uh, of course, they also have some rather peculiar properties in potion making. For example, properly prepared, ingesting a chrysalis of an interdimensional butterfly can allow someone to perceive other dimensions. It's quite a fascinating experience, I'm told, but also bloody useless, because unfortunately, while your senses are in that other di dimension, your body is still in this one, so you spend most of that time with a nosebleed after walking into a wall that was not there. So, yes, they're fascinating things, uh, highly controlled, usually they have to be reported whenever they're found. Uh, actually, Ash, how, how did we find these particular ones? I, um, um, Can I keep three? I have a hunch about them. I have a hunch about those creatures. Well, it's more like just a feeling. I just, I feel like wherever they end up after they hatch, I need to know, like, wherever that is, is the place to be, you know? And I'll get a chance to study them at the new magic school that's hired me, being Spora. It's not in my original timeline, and I'm not totally sure how the acceptance letter got to me, considering I don't really remember sending out any applications, but their facilities are incredible. Hard to say no. I will be teaching technomancy there in November 2019. There's nothing there. And there's something else. As you know, or probably saw, my lab was... deleted. <laughs> but I grabbed Genesis' heart before we got out of there. While Jen is in the process of regenerating, I'm figuring out what to do. But the security breach actually taught me something pretty darn useful. 
By reverse engineering the security breach that that super mean chronomantic anomaly caused, I was actually able to open up Jen's frequencies, sort of, and I can receive messages from across the multiverse now. So I'm going to use that. I'm looking for those creatures that Fletch discovered, and I'm looking for ways to help Jonathan, because I have a feeling that if I find one, I'll find the other, if that makes sense. I know it doesn't. Just go with me on this. <laughs> Thing is, they could be anywhere. And I mean anywhere. So I'm asking for help. From you. The same you sitting here watching this. If you've seen anything strange. If life has become an inexplicable maelstrom of seemingly disconnected, bizarre events. If you think you might have seen something strange, but it's probably nothing, but you still can't get it out of your head, write to us. To send your letter or recording or message, instead of putting an address on it, just write the hashtag technomancy support. Jen will pick it up. Whether you're an orc in a medieval village getting this message through some sort of resonant crystal, which I would be fascinated to study, or whether you're a cyborg at a school for superheroes getting this message on your smartphone. I want to hear from all of you. If you address your message with the hashtag technomancy support, Genesis will pick it up. She's pretty fantastic that way. Or they. I actually don't know what Genesis is going to choose to be next. Huh. We may be able to help you. And we may get to help ourselves. So, hopefully, see you somewhere in the multiverse. There will be more information in the description under this video. And to prove to you that it works, let's see what my friend Robin is up to right now. Genesis, call Robin Brooke at Stone. Matrix open and online. The anomaly's been getting more aggressive. According to the research that I've done, its name is Olive Jones, sibling to our dear beloved Willow Jones. And unlike most temporal anomalies, she is a free time manipulator. Now, most chronomancy is easy to track down on and pinpoint because it's slow. A, a mundane witch or wizard practicing chronomancy takes time and effort to conduct, but she can do it at will, which makes her a nightmare to track. But I've made progress. I've developed a relatively simple extrapolation algorithm that uses some pattern recognition to find out where, when, and in which dimension she's going to resurface. According to the calculations, it'll be Beanspora School of Witchcraft, dimension AR1701. Well, that's where I'll have to go. Track her down, capture her. I'll need a cover story for that. This isn't the first time I've dealt with the Fae, though. When I was a teenager, I went to this school called Avalon. It was a cutthroat, dog-eat-dog -dog society of spellcasters. But the Fae had a presence there, and I learned things. The creatures are deathly allergic to this material called cold iron. And I have measures in place to ensure my protection. I may not be able to catch Olive, but for now, she can't touch me. But the Fae had a weapon, a sword that they called Excalibur. Forged from the spine of a Fomorian, it was the only weapon capable of hurting those creatures. And that gave me an idea. If I could kill a fairy, harvest its spine, and forge a blade from it, I could create a weapon capable of hurting those creatures. And I'll call it Clarent, the traitor's blade. The Fae have hunted me for years now, and it's time that I pay them back. Be careful, Olive, because the Skull King is coming for you. Okay, this is fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's, it's fine. I guess Robin's gonna come with me on the next adventure to be in Spora. No need to ask or anything, Robin, of course not. For the record, I have no recollection of my part in Robin's previous message to us. I blacked out at the time, and to my knowledge, I have not yet learned to possess the body of my past self. So, it's, fi it's fine, it's fine. It's probably fine.
Oh no, time broke again. Now it's up to us to fix time. But we have to make sure we do it in time. 